<laughs> Would you look at that? Somebody's accidentally put a very fine black spiced rum in my water instead of ice. Oh well, you shouldn't waste water. Hello everybody and welcome back to another long-awaited Q&A. It's been far too long uh, since I've done one of these. Got no excuses, but fuck it. Let's just continue. Callum Lynch asks, Who do you think is the best? Batman, Spider-Man, Superman or Green Goblin, the Joker and Lex Luthor? That's kind of a weird question. It doesn't really have any kind of overarching theme. It's like, it's not just DC, it's not just Marvel, it's not just heroes, it's not even just villains. That's a very strange question. But out of the choices, I would have to say the Joker, mainly because the, um, first of all, the heroes you selected are pretty bland. I mean, you got Batman, Superman, Spider-Man. They're pretty bland, mainly because those three in particular, I think... This is more of a this is more of a problem with um, superheroes today as opposed to when they were first created. Because especially with Batman, Superman, and Spider Man, they were all very much products of their time. So wh while when they bring them to modern times, because they time traveled, no, that's not what I meant. Um, but when they continue to make them today, they they're still part of that time where they came from. Um, and I think out of all of them, maybe, probably Spider-Man's probably changed the most in terms of um, keeping with the times. I know that's a really shit phrase, but you know what I mean when I say in keeping with the times. Because Superman is the absolute pinnacle of the 1950s era sort of thing. That, that was his thing. And Batman was almost a counterpoint to that. And they still are today. They, they still are that. So I think out of the heroes in that list, um, it would have to be Spider-Man because he's, he's uh, changed the most. And I, I say this even though I don't actually like Spider-Man. I, I think his story is far too complicated and they keep rebooting it and I just don't like Spider-Man. And yeah, that's that, 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 but out of the choice of the three... Spider-Man would be my most preferred because, like I said, it, it's the differences. They, they've managed to keep him more relevant. That's not to say the other two aren't relevant. All I'm saying, he is the most um, up-to-date and relevant of those three. Definitely not my favourite superhero, though, but that wasn't the question. Uh, but yes, the, out of all of them, it have to be the Joker, because the, the Joker's, you know, he's pure chaos. He's, he's got many different origins people can make shit up about him and it still works and makes sense because pff, who cares so yeah i like the joker in all his incarnations from jack nicholson to jared leto yes i like jared leto as the joker but anyway that's my answer to the question it was a bit rambly there sorry this next question comes from jeremy berend here's one you probably won't answer ha, wrong. but what's your take on horror movies being translated into comics Horror movies being made into comics is not really a new thing. Um, mainly because you've got like um, Aliens vs. Predator, the one of the most well-known comic franchises. And with from that, you have um, Terminator was added into there. I don't know if you would count Terminator as a horror movie. It's more of an action thriller, but whatever. Just go with it. Um, but the one that comes to mind the most would have to be Hellraiser. There are many Hellraiser comics. I have not read any of them. But I, I might read some just to see what they're like. Because I, I, I honestly don't know. From what I've seen of the extra stuff here and there and little tidbits of um, lore, it's all very interesting stuff. And some of the comics are apparently pretty damn good. So I might check them out. I don't know yet. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll bring this up later. Um, also, this is one you probably haven't heard of. But one I have read. Um... The, the the classic horror movie. Is it a horror movie or a crime thriller? I don't know. Well, anyway, the movie Seven. You know, the, the Kevin Spacey, the uh, Morgan Freeman. A great, great film. But yes, it actually had a comic book series. Obviously, it had a seven-issue run. I had all seven. I got rid of them because they were pretty shit. Um, and basically, all it was was... Backstory on John Doe the main antagonist, um, and kind of backstory and all the different victims, yeah. And that was pretty much it. 
Um, and it wasn't it wasn't really that necessary, mainly because all you needed to know was already in the film. It just kind of elaborated on that, so it was all just extra stuff that just didn't need to be there. The stuff about John Doe was interesting, but again, the whole point of John Doe is, as his name suggests, he's John Doe. That's kind of the point. You don't need to know about him. That you know that that's the whole point of the movie. But anyway, that's just a whole other question. So yeah, um, I some comics from horror movies work out. I haven't I obviously. These are just the ones that I know about. There's probably loads more. Um, I can't quite think of them right now, but yeah. Um, so yeah, they, some of them can be okay. Um, I'll have to check them out personally to know. So I don't really know. Um, I said the word no far too much. But yeah, um, they're okay. It's, it's, a, it's another medium like anything else. And I think uh, it works. You know, it works from comic to film. 30 Days of Night, for example. Um, not the sequel. Fuck that shit. Um, and it works the other way as well. It, it just works because comics and horror movies are both quite visual. They're quite a visual medium. So I think it works for comics. Because a comic really wouldn't really work for, say, <laughs> Pride and Prejudice. And that's not just because Pride and Prejudice is a load of crap. Ooh, controversial. Um... But yeah, you, you see my point, because horror movies are a visual film. It's all about what you see, not so much about anything else, although it can be. Um, so yeah, that's why horror to comic actually works. Um, and to a lesser extent, horror to uh, horror um, action to comic works as well. And I'm sure you could make it work for almost any genre of film, TV show, anything like that. Um, so yeah, it, it, it works. If you do it right, like anything. Anything can be shit, anything can be great. So, there's not much to say. It's like, it, it all depends on the writer, it all depends on the illustrator, and it all depends on the actual story itself. So, yeah. Um, it's a mixed bag. I would say, go in with as much information as you can if you want to actually check any of these out. Like I said, even the Hellraiser stuff. There's a lot of them, and a lot of them are shit, from what I've heard, but... There's quite a few of them that are actually really good as well. So, who knows? So, do your own research, because I haven't done my research, clearly. So, yeah, there you go. Next question comes from Robert Griffith. What is your favourite H.P. Lovecraft story? Not film, but written story. When it comes to H.P. Lovecraft stories, um, I would say... Personally, my favourite would have to be something like Shadow Over Innsmouth. Because it, it really is the quintessential um, Lovecraft story. It's got everything that, what made Lovecraft, Lovecraft. You know, it's got, um, it's, it's got cults, uh, old ones, explosions, um, you know, creepy villages. It's got all that stuff. If you've, if you've seen Dagon, for example, you know the story. It's pretty much identical. Um, and, but it's, it is a classic story you know and even the game it's the game is call of cthulhu but um which is a let's play on the channel if you haven't seen that uh, the game is call of cthulhu but it's still based on shadow of Innsmouth because that seems to be the 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 go-to thing for people who do lovecraft stuff you know um so yeah it's 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 an interesting story and that's why i like it, it yeah it, it really does emphasize everything about lovecraft now this is where it gets strange because Lovecraft story, yes, but Cthulhu Mythos story, no. I would say that my favourite uh, Cthulhu Mythos story would have to be something like um, The King in Yellow. Because that's really interesting. If you're not familiar, The King in Yellow is very similar to, um, uh, blanking on the name, In the Mouth of Madness. How can I forget that? It's very similar to In the Mouth of Madness, except uh, instead of a book, it's a play called The King in Yellow. And it's, it, it, I think, because I haven't read it in a long goddamn time, but it's, it's, it's like three stories all about kind of this theme. But obviously my favourite one of those is the actual play itself, because the play is really creepy. Um, and I'm not going to spoil it or anything, but the, the, one of the last lines is fantastic from the actual King in Yellow. And of course... It brings up um, more of the old gods 
and all this stuff. It's, it, lots of, it adds a lot to the lore in a really nice way. And that's why I think um, a lot of people uh, have a problem with when they do a Lovecraft story as well. They don't try and add to the lore. For some reason, when people um, write a Cthulhu Mythos story, they like to draw from old influences from the actual originals, like Call of Cthulhu, Shadow of Innsmouth, Dagon, all those, um, and then incorporate it into a new story. But personally, I think it would be really good if they just understood that the theme was enough. All you need is the theme of Lovecraft, and then you can literally do whatever you want. Um, if I can mention one of my favourite horror movies, Oculus. That is a perfect um, sort of Cthulhu mythos film because it gets the atmosphere down, it gets the themes down, but then it makes its own story. It adds to the mythos. It makes itself relevant, which I think is key. Because if you don't make yourself relevant, then what's the point? You're just copying old stuff and we can just read the old stuff. You know, we don't need to read your new story because we've got Call of Cthulhu. We have Shadow of Rinsmith. We don't need another one. Make something new. That's what I care about. So, and I think additions to the mythos are very possible today and should be embraced. And like I said, Oculus is a damn fine example. But that's a film and we're not talking about film. Um, haven't really read much in the way of um, Cthulhu mythos style books. Um, but I know there are some out there. I can't think off the top of my head. But it, it, the exact same principle is with film. As long as it's a relevant story with the same themes, not even the same themes, similar themes, um, similar atmosphere, uh, all that good stuff, it's, you, you can create your own addition to the mythos. And it, has to, and it doesn't have to m even mention anything to do with Lovecraft. You know, you can put in like little references here and there. Oh, I, I just thought of one then. Um, Amnesia, The Dark Descent. Amnesia, A Machine for Pigs. Those are video games that have had it added to the mythos, you know, in fabulous ways, especially Machine for Pigs, which again, watch the Let's Play, I, I talk endlessly about how much I love that game. So yeah, that, that's, that's what I think is key when it comes to stories of the mythos. But I just realized that I am going wildly off the question. So yeah, Shadow, <laughs> Shadow of Rinsmith. Um, I hope my rambling was interesting, even though it wasn't fucking relevant. But anyway, yeah, that's my opinion. Um, and yeah, you, you're welcome to ask me more if you want to know more, but I didn't want to ramble for too long on one question. Here's a weird one for you, because for some reason on Twitter, um, the unofficial fan magazine Twitter account for Leeds United Football Club is a fan of mine. Okay. Um, and this is their question. What are your thoughts on the Candyman films? Any plans to review them? First of all, yes, of course there's always plans to review them, because basically, uh, if it exists, it's more than likely I'll review it eventually. I can't give any specific dates, though. Um, and I mentioned this several times. I can't mention specific dates, and I can't say, oh, I'll do that next, because I have quite a few Patreon requests to get through. Um, and they do take precedent above most other things, let's be honest. So yeah, um, all I can say is I will look at them eventually. Um, I haven't actually seen them yet, so I can't give my opinion. Um, but yeah, I'll look at the Candyman films eventually. And of course, link in the description if you want to uh, donate to my Patreon and maybe put them up closer in the roster, perhaps. You know, it's entirely up to you, but the, the option is always there if you want to, but it's not necessary. This next question comes from Stephanie Sermon. If you became a Power Ranger, what colour would you hope for and why? Now, I, I used to watch Power Rangers. Um, I think most people did, especially people of my age. Um, but to me, I never really thought the colours meant anything. I mean, am I completely wrong on that? I always thought, I mean, obviously, Red Ranger is the leader. That's from what I think. Uh, but that's about it. There's there's not really much, um, you know, role designation with the colours. I mean, may, maybe I'm missing something. 
But I, that's what I've always thought. There's, there's never really been much of a reason for the colours except for red, which was the leader. But then again, he wasn't the leader because he was red. He was the leader, so he was red. That's how I always thought it worked. So I don't really know. Um, and again, <laughs> the, I'm probably thinking way too much about this. But And again, the, it, it wasn't really the colours. Especially when I watched it, which was the very first, the Mighty Morphin stuff. It wasn't the colours, because it, it was the actual animal. It was, which dinosaur would you want to be, you know? That's what I thought it was. Um, and I'm not too sure why there was a blue Triceratops. Or an actual red Tyrannosaurus Rex. But that that's kind of the point, is that it wasn't really anything to do with anything. It was... This was your animal, this was your colour, but they don't mean anything. Which, when you think about it, doesn't really make much sense. You would think they would have some kind of hierarchical thing. But again, maybe it's not about hierarchy. I don't know. And again, I can sense I'm way overthinking it. Um, I'm going to say green. Because I like Godzilla and he was basically the Godzilla of the team. At least in Mighty Morphin. Fuck knows what he was in the latest one. If even if is there a green in the latest one? Uh, what is the latest one? I don't know. All I know is that it it's gone on for ten thousand years, and they're making a reboot film, which honestly doesn't look too bad. I'll probably see it eventually. God knows when. But yeah, it, it looks interesting. And again, Mighty Morphin stuff. So it's all the dinosaur stuff. Which just reinforces what I was saying about how it's not really about the colours and it's about the animals and even then it's not really about the animals and ah, Whatever. Too complicated. Made this far too complicated a question. Green is my answer. There you go. We have an incredibly important question from Rigor Mortis. How come fish don't have nipples? I would have thought that was pretty obvious there, Rigor Mortis. Because logically, if they got them pierced, they would sink. Think about it. And last but not least, from the Dark Lord Darth Vader himself. Who's your favourite actor and actress? Uh, my favourite actor, uh, to be a bit uh, different, I would have to say Buster Keaton. And if you've not seen a Buster Keaton film, you really should. Because they are both fucking hilarious, but also very, very interesting to watch. And that's all I'll say. Look up Buster Keaton. He's great. And when it comes to actresses... Um, I'm not too sure, mainly because a lot of the films I've seen with actresses as the main character, a lot of them are shite. Hello Resident Evil. Um, I mean, honestly, if I was to say one off the top of my head, I gotta like Ashley Lawrence, but in Hellraiser, not Hellraiser 7, because that film can fuck off. But yes, I mean, I, I like Ashley Lawrence in that film, and she's hilarious on Twitter as well. She is, of course, relevant to the channel. But if I was to mention someone who wasn't relevant to the channel, but definitely fits the favourite actress moniker more than most, would have to be Thaisa Famiga. And if you don't know who that is, I'm not really surprised, but I'm going to leave it there. So this has been a Q&A thing, finally. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, whatever the hell this is. And yeah, if you want to submit questions, you can do in the in the uh, in the description. No, mine. I'm the description. Um, you can put it in the comments. Obviously, you can ask me any questions in the comments. There's also my Twitter um, and also the Facebook fan page. You can put questions there too. And again, all links are in the description. And if you would like to make some kind of donation, support the show, help it keep running. It really does help. Uh, you can go to my Patreon page and see if you want to make a donation, but it's not necessary whatsoever. I don't want to push anyone into that. But yes, thank you very much for watching, and please like and subscribe. That also helps. So yeah, and, and I'll probably see you in the next video, wherever the hell that might be. So yeah, uh, bye.